am Gail Locke McDowell, author of Crack and Coding Interview. Today I want to talk about bubble sort. So bubble sort is a very naive sorting algorithm, not one we'd probably want to use in the real world. But what it does is just walk through the array and every time we see elements that are out of order, it just swaps that. And so if we do this enough times, then we'll eventually get our array to be sorted. So we walk through the array, swapping all the out of order elements, and then we walk through it, and so it's a little bit more sorted than it was, and then we walk through it again, swapping all elements that are out of order, and eventually the elements kind of bubble around to where they should actually be. Unfortunately, bubble sort is pretty slow. We could have to do as many as O of n passes through the array, and each pass takes O of n time. So that'll give us a runtime of n squared, but we don't need any extra memory to run this algorithm. So now let's look at the implementation of it. To implement bubble sort, what we want to do is keep walking through the array as long as it's unsorted and swap elements. So let's first just write out, so we're going to walk through as long as the array is not sorted. So I'm going to have a Boolean is sorted, and I'm going to start this off at false, presuming essentially it's not sorted initially. Now I need to walk through the array. So this is one sweep of the array and walk through this is up through length minus one. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk in a second about why I have this written instead of just array dot length. And then if the elements are out of order, if array of i is bigger than the next element, then swap those values. Swap array i and array of i and i plus one. Okay. So the reason why I have this array minus one here is because array of i is actually going to look at the next element. So if I had this be array, just go up to array dot length, then I'm going to get an out of bounds error on the very last element. Uh, so I need to make sure that these this is array dot length minus one. And so if I did have to swap the elements, then I know that my array is not sorted. So I'm going to set that to be false again. And then I'll exit the or enter the for loop when is sorted is true. So basically, I assume it's sorted here, and then I walk through the array. If anything is out of order, swap those elements, and then I indicate, hey, it's still not sorted quite yet. Uh, and then I, when I exit this while loop, my whole array will be sorted. So there's one other little optimization we can make. One thing we can notice is that the at the end of the first pass, the very last element in the array will actually be the correct maximum value in the array. So it'll be the very last element will be in place. And so in the next sweep, I don't actually need to walk through the entire array. I can stop just before the last element. So what I can do here is I can say, um, I can say, you know, last unsorted. And I can set this initially equal to array dot length minus one. Um, and then here, I after I get into my for loop, I just shrink the last unsorted size. Because once, so once I, as I said, once I get to the very end of the array at the first sweep, the last element will be in place. On the second sweep, the second to last element will be, be in place. On the third sweep, the sec, third to last element. So I can basically shrink that unsorted portion each time because these sweeps are actually pushing the lat max element along in the array. So that's how we implement bubble sort. And again, it's a pretty inefficient algorithm and you'd rarely ever implement this, although maybe in particular circumstances, it could be useful. So for example, you have an array that's sorted and um, one element in the array gets incremented. You might then, one walk through a bubble sort could then sort the array efficiently. But generally speaking, you probably wouldn't use this algorithm a whole lot. But now that you've seen the basics of bubble sort, why don't you try out either implementing it from scratch or, or applying a new sorting algorithm to a different problem. Good luck.